Hey, hey, Star Sisters, Seth here. Let me tell you a vision of a future. In the future, white boys can finally jump with the help of a booster pack and, of course, low gravity. Humanity has spread across the stars in their multitudes of diverse races and cultures. The Red Guard, the Sons of Yakub, Hispanics, Honorary Aryans, and the Fingolian Chindonesians now populate the vast expanse of space. Naturally, we never did find a solution for automation. So in the future, the only career paths are uh, space pirate, space pirate with a voice filter, or religious extremist. Parents send children away with teary eyes, knowing full well their offspring will grow up to become murderous bandits before putting on their own helmets and shooting up the 7-Eleven. And the PS5 still has no games. That vision is already here, Star Sisters, because the best game ever made, no, the best game that will ever be made is already out, and there's no competition. Baldur's Gate? <laughs> More like free hour, unskippable gay sex scene. Starfield, a masterpiece where I can live out my fantasy of being a Bangladeshi man with A-10 eyes. Starfield wins game of the year for their food models alone. Just look at the grease on that sausage. That's the difference ray tracing makes in a game like this, which runs buttery smooth on my 4090, pushing a blazingly fast 17 frames a second. I'm quite fine with this since, according to the science, the human eye can only see 24 frames a second. Sometimes my saves get corrupted and I lose progress, but in my deep unhappiness I realize I get to have those unforgettable experiences all over again. We must imagine that we are Sisyphus, uh, pushing the boulder forever uphill, for in the struggle we find meaning. Ask not what Todd Howard can do for you, but instead what you can do for Todd Howard. A good game has memorable characters, but an amazing game is one where you don't remember a single person at all. Starfield is to role-playing what dementia is to the elderly. The strongest skill in this game, following tradition, is persuasion, which lets you walk away from the last fight by saying, what if we don't? This system works by stringing random sentences together with a cadence of a crackhead until the recipient gets visibly uncomfortable and leaves, something that High Fleet would shamelessly steal. The true purpose of persuasion, however, is to gaslight companions. Sarah is strongly opposed to the harm of innocent people, so appropriately, in the style of a cartel execution, I ventilate someone's cranium. She screams at me. What the hell is the matter with you? I persuade her that I'm sorry and I'm going to do better. I'm not sure there's anything you can say at this point. As strange as that sounds, I suppose that's possible. Look, I realize things out here can be rough, so I'm going to let this go. For now. And then I do it again. I accept who you are. I'm just not sure I can travel with you on this path you've chosen. This is, single-handedly, the most entertaining thing in this game. Just... try to be more careful in the future. Otherwise, you'll find yourself traveling alone. I am not going to help you murder the You and I? The second most entertaining thing in this game is joining the pirate faction as a double agent, and in the process, becoming a triple agent. I have chosen to join the war on terror. On the side of terror, I can play entire missions without shooting a single shot, because guess what? Half the entire game is now friendly to me. I watch caravans get lit up with the same interest as a youth in the projects witnessing a drive-by. The streets give, and the streets take. Story. I've had paranoid hallucinations with more coherence than the plot of this game. Spoiler, it's Skyrim and Space. You must become Starborn to use the magical Fusro Da to kill Parfinax, who in this case is other Starborn from other universes that you must defeat to go to another universe and start New Game Plus. Multiverse Theory is appealing to fans of Rick and Morty because it implies the existence of a dimension where you haven't been molested. There's Copium Online that there's differences between universes and no run is the same. Yes, one place in the game changes. The emissary is always whoever dies in your current run, and there's a universe where Sarah is a potted plant. Objectively, this is the best universe because she doesn't talk. Yet, I heard some people even romanced this creature. If you find such dialogue captivating, I recommend intimacy with a drywall. My favorite part of the story was attending a funeral, only to interrupt it by starting a firefight. Almost everyone involved is an essential NPC, so the shootout will never end. Question, when we have an infinite amount of universes, that means we have no consequences. Anything we do can be undone by walking through a portal. So why can't we kill 
kill essential NPCs. Why even have a setting if you're not going to make use of it? This aggravates me to no end because everyone I want to shoot is a higher entity made of light. For example, there's a side quest where a 200-year-old ship from Earth, developed before the invention of a grav drive, has reached the planet resort of Paradiso. You negotiate on their behalf and are given free options. One, send every colonist to work as an indentured slave for the corporation. Two, pay out of pocket for a grav drive and send them to bother someone else. Or three, eliminate the last practicing Jew in the universe. I'm not making this up. There's a colonist on board who's preserved Hebrew rabbinical teachings. And the third option is the corporation asking you to destroy the ship. What the Austrian painter started, Todd will finish. What is this quest design? You present me with three terrible options, and my immediate response is to shoot up the board of directors. But I can't because I'm not allowed to. Because the talent in this company has dried up and left a long time ago. But it doesn't matter because Bethesda spits out a game every few years for their target audience. Dads. I get it. You have two kids, you're in your mid-30s, and you have time for exactly three games a year. I don't judge. We're all busy. But this game is immune to criticism because the people you're arguing with don't have that much time or investment. They see a crater, they soy pog, and then they leave. That's why if somebody defends this game, don't give them a hard time. They have it hard enough already between uh, beating their spouse and their children. And they still say men can't multitask. Gameplay. This game features challenging and intriguing puzzles such as fit the shape into the shaped hole and replace the battery considering the majority of xbox players have never replaced a smoke alarm this is a novel concept as it requires higher abstraction to deduce that the ubiquitous chirp in the hallway is in some way quantum connected to the set of duracell batteries you hold in your hand clearly i didn't pay enough attention during character creation as once i finished the game i was very surprised to hear my character's voice you made it I hope you're enjoying the view. Not like I missed anything. All the perks are garbage. Wanted is one of two perks that actually does anything because you get bounty hunters chasing you. The other being kid stuff, which gives Americans the experience of two loving parents that aren't divorced. For the nation holding the world record in broken homes, a stable family is science fiction. I spent a bunch of time modding guns, only to find out that guns don't scale whatsoever. Attachments on lower level weapons are a waste of time. Let me tell you how you're actually supposed to do it. You fly into a level 75 zone, but instead of being insta-killed, you cast Creator's Peace, which makes enemies drop their guns. You bring them back, tweak them on a workbench, and now you no longer have to complain about bullet sponges. Personally, I enjoyed shipbuilding. Yes, I'm aware of a hollow ship exploit, but I didn't really need it, because all I ever do is one-shot the engine with electromagnetic and board their ship, after which I disarm them with Creator's Peace and individually fistfight the entire crew. It's really fun, and if I cast Parallel Self, uh, I can roleplay as if we're having a civil dis dispute at the Bangladeshi border. I found out companions don't use ammunition, which is convenient because for some reason this game lets you craft everything except ammunition, some of which is highly specific and not sold by most vendors. In contrast, crafting ingredients are sold by the dozen, trivializing their collection and destroying any incentive you had to find them yourself. So I thought it would be interesting to try make my outposts self-sufficient, using only the resources I could find. It took me two full days before I found a planetary source of sealant. For reference, this is a common organic ingredient necessary for most structures. And where did I find it? Middle of nowhere on a toxic bio, meaning I needed to reach the bottom of a science tree and have free tears into planetary habitation before I could make planetary habitation. So, in case you're ever tempted to do what I did, don't. I remember once I saw a live leaks video of some Chinese farmers throwing pigs into an open pit and setting them on fire with kerosene. Starfield allows you to not only recreate this video, but use it for infinite experience. What I did was set up several alien breeding facilities and boxed them in. Then I built a macro script to throw incendiary grenades at set intervals, firebombing all the cows, waiting for them to respawn only to firebomb them again. I can leave my desk and come back several levels higher. Generally, however, Outpost development is a hellish experience, and that's because the game has no system to track how much you need and what you need. Your best bet for memorizing a recipe is using pen and paper. The alternative to that is jumping across load screens, walking to the vendor, buying what you assume is enough, returning to the outpost, only to find out you're missing like 
too adhesive and need to go all the way back. This game is an exercise in how many load screens can you tolerate before choosing to end it all. No wonder nobody ever got that Steam refund. We spent two whole hours docking and undocking. There's a lot of these transitional animations and it's not that they're painfully goddamn slow, it's that I can't skip them. I understand that this is a small indie company and maybe resources are stretched thin between the award-winning dialogue and the NPCs that hit you with that fluoride stare. But when the solution is so simple and obvious, you can't help but ask, what's going on at Bethesda? Despite having no access to the construction set, the modding community has managed to fix many of the issues. However, even if they do release the tool set six months down the line, I don't really trust this company to not screw me over. Remember, the only reason we don't have paid mods is because of pushback. Believe me, They'll try again. The only potential redemption of this game is the release of a full construction set, because the only way the fans could save this game is to wipe it clean and make something else. Look, I figured it out. I know why I'm so angry. I'm not angry at the game. It's not even that bad. I'm angry because I paid a hundred bucks for it. The king of a chess club has done it again. Each time I tell myself, no, not this time. But I already know, Todd's gonna tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies and each time I listen. I understand I've said some polarizing things, but in truth, I just needed a video because I signed a lot of contracts while drunk. So don't take anything I say seriously, it's all bait. But what if it isn't? What if it's actually my unfiltered dog shit opinion? As always, more content to come because I'm legally obligated. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one.